Hey everyone, if you're looking for a teardown guide on the Legion Go S, look no further. We'll be doing an SSD swap guide as well as a little bit of a deep dive on the cooling system in here as well for people that just want to look a little bit further into it. Now be sure to watch this fully if you are planning to do this yourself because there is some points that you do need to take care when taking apart this device because there is potential for user-induced damage. All right, so do not waste anybody's time. Typically when I do do these types of SSD swaps, I'll just do a fresh complete Windows install on my own. However, I do see the need and want for people to clone their own SSDs. However, I do not personally recommend it because there is no 100% guarantee that this will not mess up your OS in some way, shape or form. As well, if you're doing it on a brand new SSD, there's really no reason why not to. So if you do disable BitLocker and device encryption and all that stuff, you won't have any issues. I will leave relevant links and guides to detailing those points further and it'll be in written format it won't be other youtube videos or anything so it's just quick reference guides on how to do stuff further as well tools needed you'll need a precision screwdriver kit a plastic guitar pick or pry tool as well as a screw organizer or some sort of method of organizing your screws it doesn't have to be anything fancy as well if you are doing the cloning route you'll need an ssd enclosure to be able to plug in the new ssd to do the cloning stuff with now again i would recommend disabling secure boot as well as device encryption to avoid any potential issues with bitlocker However, that will be based on user's preference, but I will again leave a guide as a written and picture format in the description below if you want to do that. All right, so first and foremost, do not attempt to pry anything until all these screws are out and you watch this full disassembly method. So first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick off the top plastic cover and you can use this with the guitar pick along the backside of the device and be able to kind of pop it in and under and then you'll be able to basically just rip that trim piece right off there's really minimal risk of damage here uh, you can manhandle this piece i mean obviously don't but you don't need to be so gingerly with this part now once you're inside there you can remove the one silver screw in the center and then the two black screws that are holding on the bumpers on the opposite side of the device because yes you do need to remove the bumpers to get into this device so to remove the bumpers the easiest method that i found was to push the triggers down all the way take your plastic guitar pick and just place it underneath inside the bumper and then just kind of pop it up and it should come right out be careful there are clips alongside the bumper that need to mate into the white plastic clip parts on the actual device and you'll be able to kind of see where they'll go but that's when you're actually reassembling it not disassembling it so there's again little risk of damage taking the bumpers out in this portion now once your bumpers are off you're going to unscrew the two captive screws inside the trigger wells these will not come out you can i guess you could theoretically force them out but they are captive meaning they will stay in there just ensure that they don't get caught up when you're trying to take the device back off now finally with those screws unscrewed you can remove the final three screws on the bottom and these are the three silver screws and the only visible screws on the device the easiest way i found to take apart the back piece was to start prying from the top right side and then just kind of working your way along there uh, note that the trim piece does kind of go up and around for the fins on the thermal cooler but uh, it shouldn't be too much difficulty for getting them apart just take extra care on the captive screws because they can kind of get caught up in the actual screw housing when you're trying to take it apart when you finally have all the trim pieces popped off you can then start pulling downward and kind of away from the device and this will allow you to free around the trigger area all right, so once we're inside the device, the first thing you want to do is unplug the battery, pull it straight out, bend it away from the main board, make sure that there's no risk of it contacting with the main board or any metallic parts. Uh, the risk does seem a little bit low of it kind of arcing on anything, but just better safe than sorry. I've seen bad things happen. If you want to go the extra step, you can use a little bit of painter's tape or electrical tape along the battery connector and then just kind of wrap that around while you're working on everything. And then when it comes time to plug it back in, you can take the tape off. Now, when you do have the battery unplugged, press the power button a couple of times to drain any residual power. It's always good practice now if you are at this point and you haven't decided whether or not you want to do your cloning or if you want to do a fresh windows install i suggest you skip ahead or look into the description to see kind of relevant software that i recommend using for cloning although i always recommend a fresh windows install all the time in my opinion with all that out of the way it's fairly simple it's a 2242 so this is the same ssd size that came in the first legion go except it does have an adapter so that it will support 2280 or full length ssd sizes so that means you can have like your four eight terabytes on it you're good to go and it does look like it should support 
double-sided SSDs, maybe if you remove the thermal pad there and use a smaller thermal pad, but I don't have one on hand that's not in use right now, so I can't 100% confirm that. Reassembly, there's really not much risk or anything to it as long as you take care. So once you get all your clips back into place, basically you're just following everything in reverse. The only really dangers are the captive screws catching on the screw housing when you put that part back in. So just make sure they're popped out as far as they can be and then reassemble. Basically, if you want to ensure that, you can just kind of reassemble it upside down until the clips are all back in place and then you should be good to go now the only other part really is the bumpers they do have clips that line up with little holes along the housing so just make sure that those clips are lined up and just take care of angling it in don't try to force it in because i did break my right bumper and now it wobbles in the place it still works there's no issues it just wobbles in place because one of the retaining clips did get broken in the process so again just take care there's really no risk as long as you take care and for the black top trim piece, again, it's a very cheap little piece of plastic. There's really no risk of damaging it. Just go slow about reinserting it. Make sure it's lined up with all the ports. It's really easy to get that part back in. All right, so if you're at this point of the video, I know it's a little bit kind of backwards, but I figured a lot of people doing this probably already know what they're going to be doing with the new SSD, if they're going to be cloning it or just doing a fresh Windows install. So let this serve as a point to skip into the video of what to do before and after. So if you are wanting to clone it, I'll leave a link for Mac Macrium free. Uh, so Macrium Reflex is an app that you can use to clone and back up hard drives and everything. Uh, they did go to like a freemium model where you need to give your email, but I do have a link here for a free download from a reputable site with just kind of basically old downloads for software. And through this, you do not need to provide an email or any sort of setup like that. And you will be able to clone your SSD at least up to a terabyte, I believe, with the free version. Now, if you do want to do the cloning route, obviously you're going to leave the OEM SSD SSD in and then plug in your new SSD with an enclosure to the Legion Go and then just use the Macrium software through there. It's relatively simple. I'll show some on-screen footage again here of just kind of quickly how to do it, but also links on how to do it a bit further if you need to. Personally, again, as mentioned, I always do fresh install of Windows no matter what on any of these devices, unless there's some sort of special software that they have in their install, but usually that's on kind of like the Chinese handhelds. Cloning does have risks. It's not a guarantee. Uh, yet a lot of people do it a lot of people swear by it a lot of people haven't had issues but it's one of those things where why introduce another avenue for potential issues so if you are doing a fresh install please use an ethernet cable with a usb-c hub uh, just in case the wi-fi drivers don't get installed automatically through the windows installer but once you plug it into the ethernet it should pull all your relevant drivers and you should be able to set up a windows and then download legion space and do all that relevant stuff if you do encounter bitlocker issues you can get your keys from your microsoft account so if you go into your microsoft account search for your recovery keys and you'll be able to see all your listed PCs with all the relevant keys. Obviously, I'm not going to show my page because that would just open me up to all sorts of security issues. And that's pretty much it. So your first things to do is obviously download Legion Space, download all your relevant Windows updates and do all that stuff. Uh, Legion Space will pretty well have every single update that you'll need and then Windows updates will get you there further. Make sure you do Microsoft Store updates as well because this has a lot of the Xbox game bar stuff in the background as well. And then finally, the AMD drivers, official AMD drivers do work for the Z2 Go chip. So if you do want to use official AMD drivers, it does seem like you can install and use them without issue but there is the OEM provided ones through Microsoft as well. So you can kind of pick your poison there. But I can confirm that if you do use the AMD drivers, you can get actual eGPU USB 4 support. So that is a big plus. With the stock OEM Z2 Go drivers, you will not be able to get that, kind of like the Z1 Extreme drivers. And like I said, that's pretty much it. If you need any extra help, do look in the description because I'm going to leave a lot of helpful guides and potentially tools and like the SSD enclosures things to look at. Uh, just in case you do need a point of reference to start at and as well if you need a little bit of extra guidance I've tried to pick the easiest most user-friendly guides I could find with pictures and an easy walkthrough but again if you're looking further feel free to venture out on other YouTube channels uh, other SSD swap guides if you basically look at any kind of SSD swap guide from Legion Go and they do the cloning you will be able to apply the same process here and that'll do it for this one. If you want any personal help, please do join the Handhelds United Discord, where there's a lot of fellow handheld creators in there, as well as a lot of helpful, friendly folks. So if you do have any personal issues or just weird quirks or whatever, or questions about the device, feel free to jump in there, shoot me a message. That'll be the best way to get in contact with me. And as always, I hope you all have a great day.